Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you McDonald, Jamie Carr, and the South African born uh, Kara Stevens. Welcome to the show where the circuits glow. Moscow never dies in home left skies. Yeah, baby. When the day has been unkind to you, there's nothing better than coming home to some retail therapy. And if this is what I think it is, I'm hoping it's in one piece. Well, we didn't take much effort to um, to provide any cushioning, so that's not good. You know, we could have made a little bit of effort, but thankfully, nothing smashed. It's a, it's almost a miracle. And this is the rear of the actual receiver. It has a PL259 that's been retrofitted to it, so that's good, because um, otherwise you've got screw down contacts for the antenna. And a DC 12 volt power as well. And um, this is standby, so this must be some sort of uh, quietening for it if it's teamed with a transmitter. I'll be finding out all about that. And I think the reason why it has a timber back on it is because it does have a ferrite rod antenna for certain frequencies. And let's take a look at the, uh, at the front. And I think the front of this receiver is quite a pretty thing. It's certainly very uh, reminiscent of my childhood. The actual band dial is working well and band spread is all working nicely. There are a few of these dials that feel a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, uh, rickety. So antenna trim and BFO pitch feels strange like it's rubbing. Band selection seems all right. RF gain seems all right. Main tuning is all right. These switches all seem to be working like they should or they feel like they're working. We shall find out when we plug it in and give it a, we'll give it a crack. The play area is becoming a real mess. I've really got to clean up, but uh, not tonight. Too much other fun stuff to do tonight. So we are plugged in. Let's turn on the disco lights. And we have a PL259 on the back of this thing, so we're going to need to get an adapter because I'm all BNC now. Have I got myself a piece of crap or a decent radio? I'm about to find out. Out the door, sale is on now, and door's fine. Lots of mains hum as you go between channels. Probably try running it on 12 volts. Lots of pot cleaning, lots of uh, cap changing that needs doing. But uh, this is going to be a labour of love, I'm certain of it. Antenna trim, you can see that's uh, doing its job. You can see that meter peaking as you uh, change that. That's your hour of gain. Now when we go up to band D, which is where the 40 meter band is. You can see there's problems with that RF gain.
So I would say this thing needs a heap of work. And many people would say, why bother? And I would say, because it's fun to try. <laughs> so that's what I will be doing. I would just like to say all this adjustment of mics and whatnot could be done away with completely if you just swapped over to one of these things here. It doesn't require any adjustments and it's four times more efficient than uh, voice communications. Okay, a little bit of broadcast band. And I'll tell you what we've done so far. We have, apart from two capacitors in here, which I'm going to get tomorrow, we've recapped the entire main board. And it does seem to be behaving itself a little bit better than it was. Also, when I opened this up, the uh, power transform was missing a screw, so we've replaced that. This is just flapping around in the breeze. I've gone in and tried to look at any cold soldered joints. And like I was saying, the RF pot, which is a double gain 2K ohm pot, uh, looks like it is dodgy. So I've ordered a replacement. Hopefully it's the right size and form factor. We will see when it arrives. So that's pretty much all I can do. But I probably will play around with the cosmetics of the case. And this is 80 meters. The WIA Morse Practice Beacon. And as you can see, this pot... It's either all or almost nothing. So that's right at the end of the travel of the pot. So I would say that's probably the biggest problem is that RF pot. That's what I'm hoping. Um, I might actually have a receiver that's quite usable aside from that. So fingers crossed when we get that pot that uh, that solves a lot of the problems we're presently experiencing. But uh, I've had a lot of fun playing around inside this thing. It's uh, very reminiscent of the... Uh, type of gear that I was servicing when I was at the Australian Maritime College. And you can see just over here, I've installed a barrel jack for the DC input. I'm hoping that makes the receiver run quieter. So this is the jack that I use for all my other gear. They've got one of these things on the back. I didn't want to have to make a separate power leader and adapter. It's just as easy to put that in. I know people, you know, this purist will say, why are you doing that to your rig? Uh, but, you know, I don't really care. There's things that have been done to this already. It's had a PL259 installed down here and various other things so I think the cat's been let out of the bag and uh, I don't mind making modifications but um, the speaker situation I think because I think the speaker sounds so much better for forward facing I will probably put that speaker in a little tin box and make a little speaker for this uh, <laughs> Now, one of the things I noticed about this is that uh, when you put it on batteries, probably to save battery energy, the little incandescent 
dial lights do not light up. So what I've done is I've put a DC adapter on the back here and I'll just fire it up and I'll show you what we've we've done to uh, get around that issue. Now I could have used the incandescents that are in here but they probably would still suck a lot of energy so as you can see the dial will still light up but uh, what I've done is I have inserted some 10 mil yellow LEDs that I picked up at, uh, at JCAR and uh, I think they do a really nice job of lighting up those dials so that's the uh, latest pimp of the, uh, the ring. Well I was itching to finish the repairs on this DX160 and parts hadn't arrived so I was having a, a play on top band and uh, you know learning how to set the uh, stored messages in the uh, QCX Plus and lo and behold well after business hours and I'm not complaining uh, we have this parcel arrive and it is I'm hoping the parts that I need to fix the RF uh, gain on this receiver so let's get this open and have a look now we ordered these parts on AliExpress I wasn't sure about the form factor the size etc etc I was looking at the picture and hoping they're the right size so Lord only knows what I've gotten through the post I'm hoping that uh, it will do the job so let's have a look at what's arrived and I'm hoping they are the right value as well <laughs> as you can see um, I now have a thousand of them uh, <laughs> which is interesting yeah it was four or five bucks so Lord only knows what I'm going to do with the rest of them I'm hoping that will actually fit I think it will so that's our double gain pot it's a 2k so it should do the job. Let's have a look and see if the actual knob fits on it. That will be a good start. We may need to do some adjustments to get it on. Um, but uh, if it works, uh, that's not going to be a big price to pay. Uh, widening that uh, pot slightly to get it on. I'm sure it will get on. And um, we'll have a... Uh, potentiometer that works hopefully let's get it in and have a look now the dastardly plan is to swap the wires one by one and that way we don't get lost because they all look very similar there is a color code on them but they all look very similar so I'm hoping that uh, by doing it this way uh, we minimize the chance of, uh, of getting confused about where each wire goes so we hold it in the same position and we just go wire for wire, boom, ba boom, ba boom, and hopefully that uh, gets us a replaced potentiometer. So one is out. That looks a lot more substantial than what I'm putting in, so the jury's out as to whether this is going to work. Hotel, Hotel Zero, Zulu 59 plus. This is 20 meters. It's around the 14 meg band as well. So that uh, problem with the uh, RF gain not being smooth has been resolved. This is a VK1. It's Chris.
Now that is a Russian station. Not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my brand new refurbished toy. In his career, uh, Craig Williams looking for you know, a third Cox Plate win after going into Group 1 wins and has won the last two Cox Plates last year on Romantic Warrior and the year before that on Animo. So uh, it would be quite the story if he's looking at that now. And here it is. I think this is the Greek news. And this is the lineup. Try to place. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. My original plan was to do a little bit of a, not a deep dive, but a bit of an explanation of how a single conversion super heterodyne receiver works and why it's a benefit to use that particular RF architecture. But I have decided that this video has run for long enough. And I think if I'm going to make a video about that, perhaps it would be best to do it as a separate video. So if you would like me to do that sort of explanation, or maybe do a series of explanations of the various types of architecture in layman's terms, because that's all I'm ever able to do, because I am a layman, just let me know in the comments section below. 73, and I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.